Hello and welcome to my review of the Gloom Spike Gits Mangler Squigs. Now one of these box sets will set you back a whopping £50. It's quite a large amount of money and uh, it means that this is the second most expensive um, set you can get for Gloom Spike Gits after they start collecting. Of course you can always pick up a Colossal Squig um, from Forge World, which set you back about £67. But anyway, this is a review on the Mangler Squigs. You will see the Colossal Squig uh, later on in the video. It's a dual unit kit. And you can make two separate units from this, either these Mangler Squigs, which I've built, or a Loon Boss on Mangler Squigs. I may well get a Loon Boss on Mangler Squigs, but uh, I, I think I've got a fair number of uh, Loon Bosses now. Everything from a Loon Boss on a Cave Squig uh, to a normal Loon Boss. And I've got a Loon King as well. But there's always the option uh, to get another uh, pack of these. I think that these Mangler Squigs look better than the, the Loon Boss on Mangler Squigs. I'll, I'll just give you a, a little showcase. This is uh, what I'm talking about if we look at the box. Um, I think the armor plates are just too small to make any any impression. I do like this uh, git um, that's uh, you know being hurled hurled away or it's been launched um, and I do like the the moon cutter um, it's just there's not as much focus on the loon king, king because there's there's a couple of um, gits on there as well and I would have preferred like just him on there suited up with armor plates on the legs and things and all the rest of it I do think the accessories are lovely though for this kit and um, I like all the little mushrooms and things uh, that you can um, uh, put on the base and uh, I do like uh, you know their faces uh, and the chains that are attached and things but let's have a, a closer look at the, the the model itself and then we'll uh, look at the spare parts we'll go through some size comparisons and finally I'll uh, talk to you about the rules so um, this is uh, the, the Mangler Squigs um, model um, You've got, uh, I've tried to put a fair few things happening on the base. So I've got a little git that's uh, running away. This one's also running away, but he's got his tr trusty uh, mushroom. You've got this ball and chain attached to uh, one of these Magda Squig's legs. You've got this other chain that's attached to the other one. Um, I mean, I think it would be cool if they ran at something um, with the chains outstretched, if, if that would be possible, I think it would looking at the physics um, and then they could kind of like clothesline uh, a giant or something if they ran at it hard. Um, you've got these mushrooms with the little faces. I don't know if you can see that. Um, pretty cool. Um, yeah, look, I like the faces of the Mangler Squigs and I like the gits on there. You've got this one riding this one and then this one uh, riding that and this git just holding on for dear life. Uh, I would have liked to have um, put the um, Git being launched off. I guess you still can. You know, you can, you can accessorize this a little bit. Um, but uh, I really like the the pose and how how they go together. You know, it's it's one of these models where you you have to take a double uh, double look at it um, and and see how it attaches. Um, you know, so it attaches there and attaches on this chain. Uh, it was nice to put together. I think I put it together in a live stream. So if you remember, you can go back and uh, check that video out. Uh, while you're doing your own hobby goodness. There are a few gaps and things in places which I'm yet to just go over and smooth, um, but uh, you know, most of the mold lines are, are uh, deleted. Um, but yeah, lovely, lovely mini, um, really fits well with the rest of the Gloom Spike kits, and I'm pleased I made one. I mean, you know, they could have just done a Mangler Squig, uh, just one with a, a, a Loon Boss on there, you know, heavily armoured up, but they chose to do two. Um, and uh, what you're what you're really looking at here is, you know, what twenty five pound each, which is probably about right, uh, really, um, for these size minis with this much detail. Um, so yeah, although the kit is expensive, you could only really need one, maybe two in your army. Um, but there you go. That's the the Mangler Squigs. I'll just show you uh, all the uh, spare parts of which I've got here. So there you all your spare parts. Um, you know, you, you get these uh, the alternate chains because they go on uh, differently if you choose the uh, the Loon Boss um, variant. You get different legs. I think that's a tusk for the face. That's the uh, the Loon Boss himself with uh, with like a knight helm on. Uh, different uh, jaw 
and teeth. Not quite sure what that is, it's some kind of cloak thing. Um, part of the, the loom boss with the sickle, uh, a head, uh, another head with a cauldron as a helmet, makeshift helmet. One of the armor plates, again, not a huge fan, um, you know, but that would sort of go on there, I think. You can attach it otherwise. Um, another armor plate. Um, it's actually uh, another bit of scenery here, uh, another accessory here with a kind of dwarf um, piece of masonry. That's quite cool. You've got some legs, I think. Uh, part of one of the other gits and a uh, different head for one of them and another um, little different tail. Um, I can't find the, um, the git that's flying in, in midair. I'm not quite sure where I put him or whether I placed him on a, another um, model. I'm gonna have to have a look at the rest of my gits, but uh, you know, that's life. He probably is around here somewhere. Maybe I put him on uh, one of the giants. Uh, so I can't show you him, but uh, there are all the other spare parts. And yeah, as I say, you get one of those flying uh, gits too. Now then, size comparisons. Let's do a squig off. Do you get it, a squig off? Oh, never mind, never mind. Okay, so here's the biggest squig I have, the Colossal Squig um, from Forge World. And yeah, it, he is obviously colossal, you know, he's, he's much, much bigger than one of these Mangler squigs. The biggest squig I own, um, probably that Forge World will, will make, he is just ginormous. He could most probably take on um, these two squigs or at least eat one of them quite happily. I don't know whether they do eat them, but uh, the fun fact is, is when this Colossal Squig um, dies, it explodes and releases little squigs, which is interesting. Anyway, that's the biggest squig I own. And then this is, is it the smallest squig? I'm not quite sure, but this is your normal squig sized squig. Um, so maybe that's a good size comparison between a mangler and a squig. Cave squigs are a bit bigger and I do have a cave squig in the uh, battle force, but I haven't built any of the models in that battle force yet. And um, they're still on my list um, uh, to build. So I can't give you that um, size comparison there. Um, but next to other uh, large um, models, I'd probably say the Arachnorok uh, is right there. A um, bit cheaper, I think, than a mangler squig also in plastic. Arachnorok's probably one of the biggest uh, models you'll have for your Gloom Spike Gits armies. We've got the Loon Shrine right here, which yeah, is probably the biggest um, uh, model that you'll have actually. Um, and then we've got the uh, Dankhold Trogoth, which is yeah, almost the same height, um, but goes quite well. Quite a big, uh, big troll there or Trogoth, and then we've got a Rock Gut Troll as well. So if you've got some Rock Guts, uh, you'll know how big the Mangler Squigs are um, compared to uh, to the Rock Gut Trogoth. And I'll just show you the size of um, Mangler Squigs next to like a normal um, git, I guess. It's one of the, one of the ones from the uh, Arachnorok set. And obviously there are gits on the, the unit themselves, but it's always nice to see how big um, you know the, the model itself is next to normal kind of like little troops. Okay, uh, this leads me on to uh, the next topic of the review, which is the rules for the Gloom Spike Gits Mangler Squig. Um, you'll find uh, their rules or its rules in your uh, Gloom Spike Gits uh, Destruction Battle Tome. Now, Mangler Squigs. Um, Unit size is one, maximum is one. Their points cost is 240 points and they count as a behemoth. Um, so the same as uh, the Arachnoroks and the Gargants. So what do you get for uh, this large number of points? Well, uh, their movement speed is affected by the wounds suffered. Um, so let's just go through this. If they only suffer between zero and two wounds, the movement speed is 3d6, which is very fast. Uh, their save is four plus, their bravery 10, and they have 12 wounds to begin with. They're a single model equipped with huge fang-filled gobs and balls and chains. The crew, this model has a grot crew that attack with their bashing sticks. For rules purposes, the crew are treated in the same manner as a mount. Fly, this model can fly. Yes, you read that correctly. So as I just mentioned, uh, it's one of these models where the wound suffered affects uh, the rest of its abilities. So wound suffered between zero to two, the movement speed is 3d6. Uh, the huge fang filled uh, gobs will hit on a three plus and the balls and chains will have seven attacks. Between three and four wounds, movement speed drops to 2d6 and the huge fang filled gobs go to four plus. Ball and chains down to six attacks. Five to seven wounds, it's a d6 movement. Five plus on the 
fang filled gobs and a five attacks for balls and chains, eight to nine wounds. Their movement speed actually goes up uh, to 2d6. <laughs> their movement speed kind of drops and then when they've really got a lot of wounds, it rises up again. And it's the same for the uh, to hit and the number of attacks. The fang filled gobs goes up to four plus to hit and the attacks for balls and chains goes to six. And then when they've got 10 plus wounds, their movement speed goes right back up to 3d6. The fang filled gobs goes to three plus and the balls and chains go to seven. So it starts off high uh, and then when they get to like five to seven wounds, uh, they drop. And then when they suffer even more wounds, it goes back up again. So for an attacking player, you may want to um, cause, you know, five to seven wounds on these things and then just leave them as they are um, because that's when they're uh, least effective. Now, the huge fang filled gobs, there's a range of two inches, four attacks. We've mentioned uh, what you need to hit. Three plus to wound, minus one to rend and a damage of D6. The balls and chains, a range of two inch, We've talked about the number of attacks. To hit is three plus, to wound is three plus, rend is minus two and a damage of D3. And the bash and sticks, the range of one inch, four attacks, four plus to hit, four plus to wound, nothing to rend and a damage of one. Abilities, curse splat. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made with this model's balls and chains if the model made a charge move in the same turn. So that's good. Um, you're hitting on three plus anyway, but uh, you know, to have it as a two plus is, is great if they charged. Watch out, if this model is slain before the model is removed from play, roll a dice for each unit within six inches of this model on a four plus that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. That's a nice little feature that when it dies, um, you've got a 50-50 chance of scoring D3 mortal wounds. Keywords, destruction, squig, gloom spike gits, moon clan, monster, and mangler squigs. But super, um, why should I take these mangler squigs instead of a loon boss on mangler squigs? Well, that's a good question. Uh, for one, they're 60 points cheaper, um, and Loon Boss on Mangler Squigs counts as a leader behemoth. Uh, in terms of the stat line, they have the same uh, weaponry and the same number of wounds, save, all those kind of things, except for the Loon Boss uh, has this Moon Cutter uh, weapon, which gives him five attacks, uh, three plus to wound, four plus to wound, nothing to rend, and only damage of one. However, uh, the Loon Boss also has an ability called um, Red Cap Mushrooms, whereby once per battle, if in the hero phase, if the Loon Boss is eating Red Cap Mushrooms, um, then you can reroll hit and wound rolls for the model, but not for the mount or crew. So only for him, for his Moon Cutter. And also it has a command ability called Bite the Moon, where you can pick a friendly model and in the combat phase, you add one to wound rolls for friendly squig units. So that's nice. You know, you're getting a bit of a buff um, for uh, while they are wholly within 18 inches of that model. So you, you're getting a nice big long range buff there of adding wound rolls for squigs. Um, you're getting the moon cutter, um, but you're paying extra 60 points there um, for him. So if you want a full squig army, uh, it might be worth picking up a, a loon boss on mangler squigs and uh, giving uh, all of your squigs a buff. As I say, I may pick up the loon boss on mangler squigs at some point because I did find this model uh, a nice fun build and uh, it looks really, really awesome next to all of the uh, Gloom Spike Gits uh, models, especially the squigs. What do you guys think of the Gloom Spike Gits mangler squigs? Um, I think for this set, it would be really pushing it if Games Workshop only charged £40. Uh, it is an expensive uh, model or you know, set of models, um, but it looks so fun. And to say that uh, the most expensive unit in your army is £50 is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a long cry away from, um, you know, two Sprue Teclas at 100 or soon to be released uh, Bellacore or even the Mega Gargants. Um, it really is not a huge amount. Um, compared to the the other armies uh, out there, or even Archeon for that matter. But what do you guys think? Please do put your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Loon King protects. <laughs>